Hey, Julie. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in the studio today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so yesterday we had Lenore Skenazy, founder of Free Range Kids, on the program, talking about the story out of Ohio where a kid was originally suspended. Uh, the suspension, I, I guess, uh, lifted, uh, but originally suspended for liking a picture of an airsoft gun on Instagram. The kid who posted the picture still suspended from what we understand uh, and, you know, it's, this has a lot of people little cheesed there <laughs> in Ohio about uh, how the superintendent has handled this, Julie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought you made a really good point on Facebook. I, I actually first saw it on your, your feed um, where you said, I'm, I'm also disturbed that they're checking on the, I mean, what in the world? Are these administrators stalking these kids? Are they regularly checking these kids' feed, Facebook feeds or Instagram accounts? That's creepy, too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is com – <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you had Lenore on. She's the best authority on these things, and I'm sure she was um, – uh, gave some perspective here, but I, I was really angry when I saw this. I thought this is complete overreach, um, completely inappropriate, uh, and and really a, a, a pretty sad commentary on our culture, uh, because I'm sure there are some people that totally support this. Oh, I'm, I'm sure there are. Um, and, you know, look, here's the thing. I, I try to understand where the superintendent is coming from. Uh, you know, apparently other kids saw this uh, picture on Instagram and were reacting. The superintendent said some of them weren't showing up. So, so maybe this was something that uh, that became an issue that the school had to investigate. Okay, I can I can buy that. But again, once the explanation is known, right? Well, look, these are a group of kids. They play airsoft in the field uh, behind our house after school. Yeah. Okay, well, then it's a non-issue, right? Then you sit the kids down and you explain, hey, you know what? We live in this hypersensitive media environment. Yeah. Uh, just had that kid at Colgate, you know, uh, go on lockdown because of a glue gun. Um, if you're excited about playing air guns with your buddies, maybe make that a specific post there, not just ready. Maybe you say ready to Play airsoft after school, uh, and that way you don't freak people out. Like, this could have been a teachable moment. Instead, it is yet another punishable I, I moment, see, and I'm just not sure what we get out of that. I see more and more stories like this. There was a couple months, or I think it was weeks ago, a, a kid who has autism was arrested um, because he had done something and a teacher had been kicked, and and it's it's bad. He should not have kicked that teacher. That's That I agree with. But... The kid, I, I was out of school for a while, and when he came back, um, he was brought in the office, and they called the police, and they handcuffed him. He was 10 years old. Do you remember this story? No. Yeah, they, they handcuffed him. They dragged him off, and, um, and you know, the, the, the mother was saying, he's, you know, he's, he's autistic, and he, he, he lashed out at this teacher, and that's, yes, inappropriate, and we agree with that, but, it, it, and, you know, again, you always, you, we've talked about this for years. I actually looked up an old blog that I wrote. And I remember talking to you about it. Um, you know, a, a school district banned hugs. Right? We talked about that. I mean, there's always this, it just seems like it goes from zero to a hundred. There's never this sort of room for conversation. Let's, 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 let's back up and see before it gets to a hysterical state or we're suspending kids or, you know, we're stalking kids on an Instagram and we don't understand the full picture, but let's just suspend them anyway. I mean, it's really, it really bothers me that again, there was no conversation with these parents. There was no kind of trying to get context before they suspended their, this kid. And, and, and I mentioned the kid who was arrested. Um, you know, I, I don't understand who's the adult in the room. Yeah. At what point do you back off and go, wait a minute, maybe we've gone a little too far here. Let's back this off a little bit. It just seems like. Absolutely. And it's happening more in schools. And look, I get it. Like the, we are living in this um, culture of nervousness um, and this what if, like I should have acted. And if I had acted, this would have been prevented. There's that sort of hero complex going on that I think leads to a lot of these situations. I think you're right. And again, I think the just the the media environment, the social media environment, everything is, you know, immediately uh, blown up. And we're looking for things to, right. to make us outraged. We're looking for things right, right to, to bother us online. Um, but, you know, when we were in Atlanta for the NRA annual meeting, I met this little girl, Caitlin Miller. She's five. Uh, she's in kindergarten. She was suspended from school for a day because she was playing with a stick at recess. 
and they were playing a game called King and Queens, and she was a, a palace guard, and the stick was a gun, and she was protecting the king and queen, and you're not allowed to do that there on the uh, playground at recess uh, in North Carolina, right outside of Fort Bragg. Um, <laughs> her dad, Billy's uh, active duty army, uh, Caitlin's now being homeschooled because uh, Billy told me, you know, he and his wife had a conversation. They're like, we're not putting up with this. No, like, we're not, we're no. not going to deal with this. This is a, a deal breaker right off the bat. Um, but, but again, as you say, I mean, we are seeing more and more of this and it does seem to get, it, it's getting to the point of escalation where, you know, again, like real common sense just is thrown out the window and you've got these parents, look, they want to support the local schools, uh, but they feel like they can't because of what their kids are subjected to there. Yeah, That's no. a real problem. Now, I will tell you, my child has been written up. I think I've mentioned this on the show before. My child, my youngest, uh, six years old, I think at the time he might have been five, um, he got written up. He has an official file um, at school because oh. he did air guns in the in the cafeteria. He was like, pew, 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 right? And, <laughs> and he was written up and this little slip of paper went in his file and then they told me they called to tell me that this had happened and they told me that they wanted me to tell him to stop playing air pistols and I told them no and I said he's five he likes to play cops and robbers and you know cowboys and Native Americans is that the right um, phrase? And uh, and you know uh, you know he he likes to play these things, and I'm I'm not going to tell him to stop. And that's where the conversation ended. They said okay, and I mean I was lucky. I I I, I think they were pretty reasonable. And maybe they just were having a bad day and didn't want to fight, but they didn't take it any further. Um, my son has also been. Uh, uh, been uh, written up for for uh, dancing and doing other things, so he's quite a handful. But um, for that particular instance, um, I thought I, you know, I I was lucky that I the assistant principal at that time was very reasonable and and sort of saw the absurdity of the call that she was probably required to make. Um, but I wasn't going to back down. I wasn't, I think that's absurd that kids can't you know play with my kids play with sticks every day on the playground, and I know that they use them as weapons um, and they pretend that they're weapons and to take that kind of imaginative play away from kids is absurd and so um, I hope more parents push back like Caitlin's parents uh, I, I do too now speaking of taking things away from people <laughs> um, Barack Obama is uh, over in Italy I don't know how much he got paid for this speech uh, speaking at the seeds and chips event uh, and boy Julie had a lot of um, <laughs> Well, I guess now it's just advice, right? It's not a mandate. It's not a directive. It's just advice on uh, on on how uh, his fellow Americans should be uh, should be eating these days. Right. We're eating too much. We're wasting too much. We're eating too much meat. Um, there's a laundry list of items that uh, Barack Obama okay. was very disappointed in Ugh. us about, right? Yeah, I, this makes me so mad. It makes me red hot. I think madder than <laughs> than the. Than the other story, um, because Michelle Obama. I'm so glad I brought this up then. <laughs> I know um, Michelle Obama, uh, you know, instituted all these school lunch reforms, which resulted in millions of wasted food every day. Every day, um, kids taking their entire trays of food and dumping them in the garbage. Um, the General Accounting Office, Congress, the uh, investigative arm of Congress, actually looked into this and. Um, just found massive, massive, massive school waste on uh, because nobody was eating the food. So I love it's so rich that the Obamas talk about food waste and um, and how much of a problem this is when his wife uh, shepherded through one of the biggest mechanisms for food waste, the school lunch reforms in 2009 and 2010. And so it's really, uh, re really pretty hypocritical for him. Um, and, and by the way, they never sort of addressed it. They never tried to back. They, they, there were some, there was a little bit of, um, of sort of additional reforms, but nothing that really solved mm -hmm. the problem of the, of the school waste problem. Again, just another example, LA County, the food waste problem was so bad that right after the, the regulations were, or the reforms were put in place, LA County, 
create the school district created a, a relationship with uh, homeless shelters so that the school food could go to the homeless shelters where the homeless people would eat it because the kids weren't eating it. So they actually had to put in place uh, steps to deal with this food waste because LA County felt so bad. I mean, leave it to California. They're, of course, they're going to come up with a solution to this. But but yeah, that's how bad the food waste problem was. So I just ugh, spare me uh, former President Obama's concern <laughs> about this issue. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> I, it would be interesting to know, uh, to, 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 to get to know, because I don't think Barack Obama mentioned this. So what's the answer, right? Do you make the kids sit there? You can't leave the, uh, the, the cafetorium until your <laughs> cafetorium. plate is cleared. I've never heard that before. <laughs> right? It's great. Yes. Yeah. I mean, okay. And, and you You've are, heard cafetorium I, before. I honestly haven't. I'm, I'm, I'm too dumb, I guess. I haven't heard that word. But the, the, the thing is, is that, you know, the reason kids were throwing this away, I mean, people don't, a lot of people don't know this. You couldn't put butter on, the, on anything. You couldn't put salt on anything. I mean, the food, it wasn't just a mess. Mm -hmm. People seem to it think that gross. it just was, it, it was, oh, gosh, it's awful because they had to ha eat more broccoli. No, you couldn't actually make it taste good. And so, you know, any, anybody who has a, any concept of how to make kids eat things, you know, you put butter, you put salt, you make it taste good. Adults are the same. You know, they like things to taste good. So, um yeah, that that uh, that I don't know what he would come up with a solution, but I suspect he doesn't even know this is a problem. You don't think anybody told him? No. Ever when he was in the White House? No, I, I doubt. They never. I doubt they that never. Too. No, 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 Kim. They never. They never addressed this. They never addressed the massive school lunch waste problem. This was swept under the carpet because, you know, it just it just was this big success. The school lunch reforms were gigantic success, even though uh, obesity rates didn't go down at all. Like nothing, nothing was improved. The only, I mean, you know, th th the thing is, is what, what what I've always said is kids would starve themselves, and then they make a beeline for you know the Seven Eleven or the gas station. Mm -hmm. And actually, I did an article once where I tracked that these convenience stores. I mean, they were making bank after the school lunch reforms. They, they, they literally, they were making a ton of money after the school lunch reforms went, went through because I, I really believe that a lot of kids were holding off. They would starve themselves all day. They wouldn't eat the food and then they'd go and eat junk food. So it actually, it, it actually made the situation worse. I could talk about this for hours. Uh, we actually, we could, um, <laughs> because I remember, and I know we got to wrap things up, but I do remember there were I think there were some congressional hearings, right? I remember seeing some news stories where, like, the head of the school, school lunch nutrition. state yes. associations were, were complaining about yes. this. What was the did, – did the oh. Obama administration just never respond or did they just say it was all some, you know, right-wing conspiracy to deprive our kids of healthy, nutritious food? I mean – what, did they just ignore it, really? Just completely? No. They, well, they ignored the school waste problem. The, sc the School Lunch Association okay. came out and said, we cannot th – th you're making it very difficult. These regulations make it very difficult to make palatable food. And the, this, these regulations are making it, making it very difficult to get kids to eat this food. And so they came out with a number of, of, uh, of requests, you know, ease up on this or that. Um, but the school waste issue – and what's so funny is because, you know, the environmental – you know, uh, you, um, it, environmentalism being such a priority for the Obama administration in school and food waste is a huge environmental problem. And so I always found it very funny that they – no, they truly never addressed the school lunch waste problem. And again, the reason they never addressed it is the reason there was a massive school lunch waste problem is because the food tasted like crap because of the regulations and the concentration of power. I mean, there's a list of fruits and vegetables you can serve. And if, if that, if that, fruit or vegetables not on that list. You can't serve it. You can't put salt. You can't put butter. You can't put any fat. Just go to a school lunch and ask the nice lady with the hairnet if, if, if you can, seriously, go ask if you can get some salt. She, she will look at you like you, you've asked for arsenic. I mean, she'll be, no, I, I don't have salt. There's no salt. There's no salt. I mean, I've done this. Um, so, you know, th this, they never addressed the school waste problem because it was directly related to the dismal quality of the food being served to the kids. Wow. All right, Julie. Listen, we could talk about this for uh, for hours. <laughs> I, I also see you now as a sort of Johnny Appleseed esque, like like Sally Salt Mill or something, <laughs> just spreading salt <laughs> in cafetoriums across the country. We just you need to get with Morton's. You need to get a sponsorship because this could be huge. I love salt. I love salt. Yes, I do. I do. I love salt more than sugar. So <laughs> you, fe you figured me out. 
<laughs> Julie Gunlock from the Independent Women's Forum. It is always so good to talk with you. Thanks for coming to the studio today. Thank, thanks for having me.